are those credible reports stating that actually for quite some degree the Israeli army might be responsible for the dead Israelis on October 7? Yes, and there are two reasons for this. Um, uh, one is uh, the Israelis uh, lacked the discipline and the training necessary to respond effectively to uh, the hostage taking that Hamas carried out, uh, which by the way was aimed primarily by Hamas at taking Israeli soldiers. Uh, the kibbutzim are garrisoned with soldiers. They are military settlements. Um, many of the people, the men there, uh, some of the women uh, are in the Israeli reserves uh, and uh, Hamas sought to take them as, as, as hostages. Um, undisciplined fire by helicopters with hellfire missiles or by tanks with incendiary rounds directed at buildings um, is what happened. And this is a disgrace uh, in military terms and it adds uh, to the uh, uh, diminution of the reputation the Israeli Defense Forces have had for uh, military discipline and expertise. But the second reason is uh, something called the Hannibal Directive. Yeah, so, um, and that is, um, given the fact that uh, Israel, uh, Israel has an enormous number of Palestinian hostages, people it has put in its prisons, often with no charges, sometimes with f fake charges, sometimes with a g genuine judicial process. Uh, conducted by military courts. But it has a huge number of hostages. And many times in the past, Israeli hostages have been exchanged uh, for Palestinian hostages in a vastly disproportionate ratio. So the Hannibal Directive basically says that rather than get into bargaining over a hostage exchange, you should just kill the Israeli hostages along with their captors. Uh, and that was also a factor here. Um, but uh, there's no question the participants in this outlandish music festival, just think for a moment, they're having a music festival on the border of a concentration camp. Um, and the people in the concentration camp can hear and see what's going on. Uh, this, is, this is outlandish to say the least, uh, but uh, uh, to the people who were killed there were largely killed, it appears, by hellfire missiles uh, and by other undisciplined fire by Israeli forces who reacted um, in, a, in a chaotic manner to uh, what had happened. And this brings me to a fundamental point. The Hamas objective, Hamas had two objectives. One was to put the Palestinian self-determination issue back on the global agenda, and they have succeeded. Uh, there is widespread uh, recognition, at least outside Israel, uh, that only self-determination for Palestine in the form of a two-state solution um, can provide security to Israel and end the instability in the Holy Land. Um, many Israelis would disagree with what I've just said, uh, but the fact is that their view is not accepted outside Israel for the most part. And even in my own country, which has a larger Jewish population than Israel, um, many, many Jews have come to realize that this is the case. Younger Jews in particular in the United States, I don't know about the Netherlands, but in the United States are very disillusioned with Zionism uh, and don't want to be, uh, uh, suffer contagion from it in the form of anti-Semitism, uh, which is actually growing now as a result of, of Israeli actions. So um, I think um, one effect uh, is uh, Hamas's success in putting this issue back on the global agenda, in destroying the uh, Abraham Accords approach of setting aside this issue of Palestinian uh, self-determination. Uh, but it has also given Hamas enormous popularity uh, among Palestinians. Uh, because they are seen as having stood up, as having been willing to accept death rather than captivity. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, where uh, 
I'm grateful to Norman Finkelstein who, um, for bringing up uh, the analogy of slave revolts in the United States. Uh, the 1831 revolt by Nat Turner, uh, a well-educated, very, very intelligent enslaved uh, African uh, who, um, who led a, a slave revolt in Southern Virginia uh, and had as its, which had as its objective, the murder of every white person they encountered. And they murdered some 60 white people, the majority also women and children as in Gaza. Um, and uh, this raises a moral question. Is the violence of the slave owner the same morally as the violence of a slave trying to end that violence? Uh, and the same moral issue arises with Israeli oppression of Palestinians versus Palestinian resistance to oppression. Um, but as was the case in the Nat Turner revolt, um, the retaliation by American whites against American blacks was gravely disproportionate. At least 120 African Americans were lynched uh, others were shot. Um, there were mock trials, uh, which were very unjust. Uh, and this is not remembered fondly uh, by anybody in my country at present. And I don't think what Israel is doing in Gaza will be remembered fondly by anyone in future. Uh, when people think of Israel in the past, they thought of it as a refuge for the victims of the Holocaust. Um, victims of Central European, I'm sorry to say not exclusively German, anti-Semitism. And um, now they will think of it as the home of perpetrators of genocide. Uh, and when they think of Israel, they will think of burnt buildings and dead babies. Uh, so this is an image problem of a fundamental nature and from the point of view of Israel, it strips Israel of its protection uh, by charges of anti-Semitism against anyone who is critical of Israel, because to be critical of people who are carrying out genocide cannot be anti-Semitism. It, it, it cannot be considered immoral. Anti-Semitism is, is a despicable attitude, uh, but uh, to oppose genocide by Israel is not. 